Welcome to our Come Follow Me lesson. I mean, not Come Follow Me, our Wednesday Plan of Salvation lesson. What, what am I saying? Let's get to that opening song. We'll be singing an angel from on high. Okay, here we go. Four minutes and five verses. Wow, the verses are less than a minute in each one. About 45 seconds each. An angel from on high, the long, long silence broke, descending from the sky. And see you low income or lonely hill for life. Oh my goodness, I don't know the song very well. Okay, I'll try the second verse. Concealed, sealed my moral nice hand. It has for ages lain to await the Lord's command from dust to speak again. It shall again to light come forth to censure in Christ's reign on earth. It shall again to light come forth to unsure in, in Christ reigns to on earth. So the verses go slow, fast, and slow. It speaks of Joseph's seed and makes the remnant known of, of nations long since then. Who once had to dwell alone? The fullness of the gospel to its pages will reveal to view. The fullness of the gospel to its pages will reveal to view. That was better. The time is now fulfilled, the long-expected day. Let earth obedience yield, and darkness flee away. Remove the seals, be wide unfurled, its light and glory to the world. Remove the seals, that be wide unfurled, its light and glory to the world. Fifth verse. Lo, is world filled with joy shall now be gathered home. Their wealth and means employ to build Jerusalem. While Zion shall arise and shine and fill the earth with truth divine, while Zion shall arise and shine and fill the earth with truth divine. For Alma chapter 31, verse 38, the end of chapter 31, we're going to do that. And the Lord provided for them that they should hunger not, neither should they thirst. He and he also gave them strength that they should suffer no manner of affliction. Save it were swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Now this was according to the prayers of Alma and his, and this because and prayed in faith. Alma prayed in faith and prayed that no one would go in hunger, no one would go hungry, no one would be thirsty, no one. He also Alma blessed that maybe that that the men would have strength and 
and they should suffer no manner of afflictions. Like I said, I'll do a quick introduction, but instead of going over the pl plan entirely through the whole lesson, that's what we did last week. You can go to the last week's lesson if you want to hear about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the Godhead, but really quick, just a review. The plan of salvation, you have the pre-mortal existence, then, we, then you have the veil, then the earth, and then the spirit world. Uh, which is separated into prison and paradise, right? And a selection of us will be able to teach the gospel. If it's not in this life, it will be in the next life, in in the prison. And um, then we'll go to judgment, be judged, you know, according, according to God. And then we'll go to one of the three kingdoms, celestial, terrestrial, terrestrial. I call it sun, moon, and star. And that's the introduction. Not going into death this time because that was last week. So, if you want a further explanation, go to that lesson. I thought we would find we would we would find some songs about the plan of salvation. Prayer and supplication. Sacrament. Easter. Christmas. So special topics. Children's songs. For women. For men. Patriotic. All right. I can't. I can't exactly find a song in here about the plan of salvation. Um. So we were going to find songs about the plan of salvation, but I didn't look up any. So we'll, we'll go to our Godhead dis discussion and we'll go to scriptures. So I'm going to search up scriptures about the Godhead. All right. So here are some scriptures about the Godhead. You have, here are some scriptures if, if you're willing to look. You have Joshua chapter 22, 1 Chronicles chapter 10. First Chronicles chapter 29, Samuel chapter 14, Second Kings ch chapter 6, Second Kings chapter 9, Ezekiel chapter 11, Ezekiel chapter 16, Ezekiel chapter 22, Ezekiel chapter 29, Genesis chapter 24, Job chapter 29, jo Joshua chapter 7, Judges chapter 13, Judges chapter 16, Judges chapter 9, Eviticus chapter 19, Numbers chapter 6, Numbers, uh, Pozom chapter 109, and then Pozom chapter 68. Those are all in the Old Testament. The Old Testament had a lot there. The New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and Luke chapter 12, Book of Mormon, um, turn off New Testament. Book of Mormon, you have Mosiah chapter 7, 2 Nephi chapter 9, Alma chapter 10, Alma chapter 60. <laughs> We're going to be in Alma for a while, according to Come Follow Me, since there's at least 60 chapters. Jacob chapter 1 and Jacob chapter 3. That's it for Doctrine and Covenants. If you want to read about the Godhead, you can also go to Doctrine and Covenants, section 107. That's it. And then pure of great price, you have Abraham chapter 5, Moses chapter 3, and Moses chapter 5. That's basically it. And then study helps, um, uh, gifts of the spirit, pure purity, you can, or veil. You can read those articles. Anyway, a general conference talks. You have one from President Nielsen. Come follow me. Oh, funny thing, our prophet President Nielsen... Uh, his talk about the Godhead is, uh, you know, is in the Come Follow, is in a, in his lesson called the Come Follow Me. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? You could go up and search this, and it will tell you some things about the Godhead. All things bright and beautiful. Uh, you could also do this, April 27th, May 3rd, and Mosiah 7 through 10, in the strength of the Lord. Come listen to the prophet's voice. March 23rd through the 29th, Enos, words of the Mormon, he works in me to do his will. And then October 26th through November 1st, Mormon chapter 1 through 6. 
I think these are come follow me lessons. With that, I could pursue aid. So we'll come back to the Godhead as we get further into the uh, come follow me lessons. So before we read this article, let me tell you something. And for the past few days, I've been I've been watching a Christmas Carol, and three is a very popular number. You know, you have pe- you have trilogies, right? You have What's a good three? You have, um, oh, one th- you, you, you know, you separate God's children into thirds, and you have one third who follows Satan, and two thirds that don't. Uh, three, three is very popular, and in A Christmas Carol, you have the ghost of Christmas past, present, future, and I thought, well, there's three people in the Godhead, so what could we do? So... I was thinking, what if I used everyone in the Godhead and and put them in placement of past, present, future? So anyway, so I thought about it, and so I was thinking, well, as the Godhead, I would put Jesus Christ as the ghost of Christmas past, because he's good at parables, and sometimes he can use p- parables of the past to teach. And I was thinking, you know, he is the Son of God, so I think he should go first. And then, and then, when I think of the Ghost of Christmas Present, I th- I think of um, well, when I was a little kid and I first saw the Ghost of Christmas Present, I thought I thought the per- I thought um, in all, all versions of Scrooge, the Ghost of Christmas Present looked a lot like Henry Father, a little, you know, so godly like. So I thought, okay, so since he's all cheeringly and he has a wreath over his head and he has this long beard, I thought, okay, and Jesus is like this too. And, and funny thing, when he died on the cross, he had a, you know, he had um, a crown of thorns and stuff. And so, placing that with a wreath, I, I, I had a hard time deciding whether Jesus Christ should be the ghost of Christmas past or present. And I just, uh, and I put her, I put him as p- past so that Heavenly Father could be present, you know, because he watches over us now. Um... I mean, Christ gave his atonement in the past, so then I thought, okay, we'll organize it that way. Now, this was the most obvious one. The Holy Ghost, uh, since he it doesn't have um, a body, since it's just the spirit, um, so, you know, um, he's kind of the ghost of Christmas future, because the ghost of Christmas future, you don't see him. He's under a hood. So I thought, okay, the Holy Ghost will be the ghost of Christmas future, you know? He helps us choose the right. When you first get baptized, you receive the Holy Ghost. And it helps you choose between right and wrong at the start, right? And the Ghost of Christmas Future kind of tells you, if you you make this mistake, if you choose this wrong choice, I know you can repent, but if you choose this wrong choice, the consequences of that will follow. So the Holy Ghost is good at, you know, referencing the future here. So he helps us choose the right because he he knows what's going to happen if we do this. If we do this wrong choice in the future, or if we do this wrong choice, you know, and sometimes we will fall short, but with repentance, we can avoid that still. So anyway, I was just thinking of that. <laughs> I don't know. What are your thoughts? We're going to do President Nielsen's talk. Uncom, follow me. All right. So here's what he says. Let's see. Okay. After we read this article, uh, I have one more thing to say, and then we'll close, and then that will be it for today's lesson. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, my wife, Wendy, and I rejoiced in being with you on the Sabbath day morning. Much has happened since our last general conference. New temples have been de- dedicated and conception child, uh, blah, blah, blah. He mentions temples. <laughs> I congratulate the many women and men who have recently read the Book of Mormon and discovered joy and hidden treasures. I am inspired by reports about miracles received. I marvel at 11-year-old young men who know as deacons worthily pass the sacrament each Sunday. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to skip over that. Because, Blake, we are thrilled with you and others who are choosing to uh, feed their spirits by feasting on the truths of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. And we delight in knowing that many are received the, receiving the power of God in their lives as they worship and serve in the temple. As many of, the, of you know, our family experienced a tender 
separation three months ago when our daughter Wendy departed from this mortal life in the final days of the battle with cancer. I was blessed with the opportunity to have our farewell daddy-daughter conversation. I held her hands I held her hands and told her how much I loved her and how grateful I was to be her father. I said, you married in the temple and faithfully honored our covenants. You and your husband welcomed seven children into your home and raised them to be devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. Val- valiant church members and contributing citizens and they have chosen spouses of that same caliber for your daddies is very very proud of you you have brought me much joy she quietly responded thank you daddy Mm, let's see it was a tender tearful moment for the us during her 67 years, we worked together, sang together, and often skied together. But that evening, we talked of things that matter most, such as covenants, ordinances, obedience, faith, family, fiddly, love, and eternal life. We miss our daughter greatly. However, because of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, we do not worry about her as we continue to honor our covenants with God, we live in anticipation patient of our being with her again. Meanwhile, we're serving the Lord here, and she is serving him there in paradise. Let's see. Jesus Christ teaches the way back to the eternal life, the understanding of Heavenly Father's plan, eternal progress, better than, the, than any of us. After all, he is the keystone of it all he is the our redeemer healer and our savior so it talks about jesus christ and heavenly father um and it goes through the plan starting with adam and eve and stuff and president nelson's daughter's passing because of god's creation technically i can relate it to this because of god's creation there was life after death if, if it weren't for heavenly father jesus christ or the holy ghost we wouldn't even be here if God didn't create us, we wouldn't even be alive. So we're grateful for that. Um, and we're grateful for the plan of salvation. It was not what I exactly expected, but it was it was worth reading a little bit. Um, yeah, so if you have any loved ones um, and you're wondering where they are, they're in paradise. I just want to talk about really quick, though, speaking of the plan of salvation and sp- speaking of of Christ's atonement. Um, There was a great apostasy that happened a little bit after after Christ's time. And um, and it happened for a very long time until Joseph Smith restored the gospel. Uh, The church fell off the earth. So there's been many apostasies throughout the times and generations and stuff, but the great apostasy is one of the biggest things. And one thing that happened during the great apostasy is that the Holy Bible... The Book of Mormon and Doctrine of Covenants wasn't made back then, but the Holy Bible was changed, and they changed the teachings of it. And Joseph Smith most like mo- translated the Book of Mormon, but as of the other books, not everything's translated. So some of the scriptures in the Holy Bible might might so Heavenly Father Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. So there might there might be some scriptures in there that may make you think that they're one person, but they're not. They're three separate beings with one purpose. So the Holy Bible is kind of confusing because it hasn't been fully translated. So when you read the Holy Bible, I just warn you to be careful. Um, though the Book of Mormon is true out of all, the most true out of all the books because the other ones have been translated so many times and it's crazy. So out of everything, the Book of Mormon is the most true. There are some people who almost believe as much as we do, but they just think Kenley, Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are one person, but they're not. They're three different beings with one purpose so try not try not to get that confused so anyway some people may trick you on that so be careful um so that's that's what i wanted to share and so i would let i will bear my testimony that i know god lives i know his son lives and i know um through the holy 
through the Holy Ghost, he can help us choose the right. And um, um, as we preach the gospel, we're preaching under God's word. And yes, I know there is a life after death. And I know, and I know if you're not a member of our church and you're listening to this, uh, go see a missionary and they will. And hopefully, even if you're still not a member of the church, uh, six months from now, maybe I'll run into you. But um, we can help you. Uh, overcome your losses, and I guess we say, I, um, I know this to be true, and I say these things, and I, I say these things in in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Sweet the peace the gospel brings. Let's try that one. It has whoa seven verses. Okay, this is gonna probably be a long song, but the verses are short, so let me see. It uh nope, it's only three minutes, seven verses, and three minutes long. So let's turn and do this. Oh, wait, we did this song before, huh? All right, never mind. I just realized we did do this song before. I saw a mighty angel fly. We'll do that one. It has four, three verses. I saw a mighty angel fly to earth, he bent his way. A message bearing from on high to cheer the sons of day. Truth is the message which he bears to the gospel's joyful sound. To calm our doubts, to chase our fears, and make our joys abound. He cries, and with the mighty voice, he nations lend an ear. And the isles and continents rejoice, the great Redeemer's near. He cries, let every ear attend, and thrones and empires all. Fear God and make the Lord our friend, the, the King, the Lord of all. Fear God the, who made the water pure, the heaven, sea, and land. His judgment will be swift and sore. The day is nigh at hand. Then all the people worship God, give glory to his name. To spread these tidings far abroad, the holy angel came. That'll be it for today's lesson. Let's see how long this video has been playing now. But I wish I kept reading about his daughter and stuff. If I read just a little bit longer, maybe it would be 45 minutes. But, wow, this is short. Uh, enjoy this short lesson, and there might be more short ones to come. Maybe even long ones. <laughs> Hopefully they're not an hour long. That'll be horrible. Uh, they won't go longer than, like, 50 minutes. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you on Friday. All right, see you Friday. Bye.